1884. The Washington Monument was completed. The eight-hour workday was instituted. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn first hit the bookshelves. And on October 13th of that year, 34 ladies met to organize a day nursery in Salt Lake City to provide a safe place for the children of working parents. Little did they know, they were laying the foundation for what would become Utah's oldest nonprofit organization dedicated to children and families, the Children's Service Society of Utah. In the early days of the United States, various circumstances left many children without parents, leading to overcrowded orphanages, especially during and after the Civil War. It was at this time in the mid-1800s that adoption began to take on a more formalized process. Recognizing the need for legal structure around adoption, states began to create adoption laws to prioritize the well-being of children, beginning with Massachusetts in 1851. Utah didn't have formal adoption laws until 1898, if only because we didn't join the Union as a state until 1896, but prior to that time, Children's Service Society was already in operation and had begun to play a pivotal role in finding homes for abandoned and destitute children. Although it had been founded as a day nursery, shortly after its opening, a baby was left on the doorstep, creating the urgent need for adoption services. As adoption practices evolved nationwide, CSS was there, helping to shape a more compassionate system that looked at the needs of the children first and foremost. CSS officially expanded its mission in 1927, changing the name from the Orphan's Home and Day Nursery Association to Children's Service Society of Utah. We became more than just a home. We were a lifeline for children in need. By the 1930s, CSS began a three-fold program, including foster care and unmarried parent services, in addition to adoption. Miss Marguerite Wooden, an enterprising woman from New Jersey, educated at the New York School of Social Work, became our executive secretary in 1928 and began to advocate for children to be placed with family members or community volunteers in a foster home type situation rather than institutionalized in an orphanage. She realized early on that children did much better in a home environment, and this began the first foster care program in Utah. A significant number of children were adopted by families who had fostered them first. This program became so successful that by the late 1930s, CSS no longer needed the large orphanage building it had occupied at 12th East and 13th South in Salt Lake City. In 1943, we moved into the historic Ezra Thompson Jr. House, which many of our alumni still remember visiting as children. CSS was there until 1996 when maintaining a historic building became too costly. The post-war baby boom also meant a boom in the number of adoptions occurring in the U.S. From the mid-1940s through the early 1970s, Children's Service Society placed hundreds and hundreds of infants into adoptive homes. However, adoption practices at that time were very different from today, shaped by the values and social norms of that era. Many women who placed their babies for adoption were often hidden from the public eye due to the stigma surrounding unwed motherhood. Maternity homes were common in many states and provided care for unmarried pregnant women, but often in an impersonal, institutional setting. Women in maternity homes were isolated from their families and communities, and many reported feeling heavily pressured into placing their babies for adoption. In contrast, CSS embraced its philosophy against institutionalization by utilizing wage homes. These were volunteer families who offered room and board to pregnant women in exchange for childcare and light chores. This provided a more supportive, comfortable, home-like environment, allowing women to make decisions about adoption without the pressure or isolation found in institutional settings. CSS's approach attempted to prioritize the well-being of both the mother and the child, ensuring that women had the privacy and space to thoughtfully consider her options. For the babies, the adoption process was also very different from today. Instead of being placed directly with their adoptive families after birth, 
Infants were cared for by dedicated volunteer foster families in what we called baby boarding homes. These families lovingly cared for the newborns until adoptive families were selected, legal matters were resolved, and doctors confirmed that the babies were healthy. Adoption workers aimed to match children with adoptive parents who resembled them in looks and who shared similar hobbies and educational backgrounds as the birth parents, believing that this would help the children fit seamlessly into their new families. Transracial adoptions were very rarely practiced at the time. Additionally, it was rare for children with special needs to be placed for adoption, as the focus was often on finding homes for healthy infants who could easily fit in. This era was marked by closed adoption practices, where all records were sealed and birth parents and adoptive families had no contact nor any knowledge of each other's identities. The prevailing belief was that this privacy would help the birth mother to move on and would protect the child from the negative stigma of illegitimacy. Shh. However, the reality was that it often left birth parents with unresolved grief without any knowledge of their child's life after placement. For adoptees, with no access to birth records or information about their biological families, they often faced feelings of rejection, of identity loss, unanswered questions about their heritage, and difficulty obtaining vital medical history. In the late 1970s, research had begun to suggest that open adoption was better for children. CSS is proud to be the very first agency in Utah to implement what was then considered open adoption. In the early 1980s, our adoption practices were revised to allow birth parents to choose their child's adoptive family themselves, based on profiles and letters that families put together. Shortly after that, birth parents and adoptive parents began meeting each other in person before the adoption took place, and then continued to stay in touch through letters and pictures sent through the agency as an intermediary. By the 1990s and into the 2000s, those early steps into open adoption had evolved to fully disclosed adoptions, with most families knowing each other's names and continuing to stay in touch on their own without as much agency involvement. Today, almost 100% of the adoptions facilitated by CSS are completely open, allowing for stronger connections and emotional well-being for birth parents, adoptive parents, and adoptees. CSS launched the Connections program in 2001. Connections is a confidential intermediary program aimed at helping those who were adopted to locate information about their origins and potentially reunite with biological family. Since then, CSS has supported nearly 300 reunions. Each reunion is special and each connection is unique. What sets Children's Service Society apart from other adoption agencies is that we are not just an adoption agency. CSS is a social service agency with several different programs for families and children. This means that if an expectant parent comes to us considering adoption, we're here to help. But if she decides on another option, our services don't stop there. If she chooses to have a relative care for her child, we can refer her to our Grand Family's Kinship Caregiver Program. If she decides to parent the child, we can refer her to our Home Visitation Parenting Program and to our Care About Child Care Programs for additional parenting supports. In this way, CSS is truly able to offer non-coercive options counseling around the pregnancy because we are not invested only in adoption. We can be invested instead in meeting the needs of the child in a way that she decides is best. We are incredibly proud of the way our services can wrap around a family in need. This, in part, is why in 2018, CSS received the Utah Ethical Leadership Award, highlighting our commitment to providing ethical adoption services. Today, fewer adoptions are taking place around the country than ever and that includes through Children's Service Society. But even though Children's Service Society is not taking part in nearly 100 adoptions a year, like we did in the 50s and 60s, we are still invested in serving adoptive families, birth parents, and adopted people. CSS understands that adoption is a lifelong journey, and so our adoption services don't stop after placement. We're dedicated to growing post-adoption support for Utah's adoption community. 
offering resources like our Connections program for Search and Reunion, adoption-related counseling, and support groups for adult adoptees, birth parents, and adoptive families. Plus, we're excited to improve community resources through our new TAC training program. TAC stands for Training for Adoption Competency, a curriculum developed by the Center for Adoption Support and Education that seeks to educate counselors and others who work with people affected by adoption to understand how adoption can play a role in the issues and the family dynamics of their clients. In 2023, CSS was proud to be selected as the only TAC training site in the state of Utah. As adoption continues to evolve, our unwavering commitment to children and families remains at the core of everything we do. We're here to provide compassion, guidance, and the resources needed to support each step. We strive to create an environment where every family can thrive. Celebrating 140 years of adoption, we reflect on the legacy of the 34 visionary women who came together in 1884 to champion the well-being of children and families. Their legacy has always been rooted in connection. Connecting children to loving families, guiding birth parents in making choices that honor their bond with their child, and nurturing supportive communities that lift us all. From our humble beginnings to the present day, the heart of the Children's Service Society of Utah remains steadfast. We continue to carry forward their dedication and compassion, ensuring that every child has the opportunity to thrive within a circle of care and connection. Helping families, helping kids with our men services children's service society is here for you